Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are back for their fourth outing as detectives Mike Lowry and Marcus Miles. This time, they're fugitives from justice on a mission to prove the innocence of their late captain, Conrad Howard, who's been posthumously accused of corruption and working with drug cartels. It's bad boys, ride or die. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm leaving the theater. Check, check. All right. This is Ronald, and I'm leaving the theater after seeing Bad Boys Ride or Die. Bad Boys Ride or Die, written by Chris Bremer and Will Beale, directed by Adil and Bilal, starring Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, Vanessa Hudgens, Alexander Ludwig, Joe Pantoliano, Paola Nunez, Eric Dane, and Tasha Smith, and as usual, for a complete cast listening, you can go to the link in our show notes. I'm not here alone. It's John Glenn. It's JQ. I'm here with. It's John Glenn. It's JQ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome back to the show. I'm so happy to be here. We picked a good movie for us and for you in particular. Uh, you have seen two of the, well, now three of the four bad boys. Yeah. So, okay, I was telling Ronald this going into the movie, but growing up during the summer, my family and I, we were a big blockbuster family, so we'd get VHS, DVDs, and we would each pick a movie. And, like, the fan favorites that we would have every summer, one would be Friday, the first one, and the other one would be Bad Boys 2. So I've seen Bad Boys 2 quite a bit. I'm quite deep on uh, Bad Boys lore. I'm more familiar with that lore than Furiosa lore, which I will circle back to because I'm making a relevant comparison, even though it will not seem that way. Okay. Uh, For those unfamiliar with the Bad Boys uh, cinematic universe, uh, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith are the... uh, aptly named bad boys it's actually it's funny because i was sitting there watching the movie and i realized that this is actually a spinoff of a theme song of a show about cops oh yeah like one thing i will say it is extremely copaganda and that did not click with me until i mean probably for a lot of us until fairly recently but you watch it and you're like oh they're police i like i never that never registered with me when i was initially watching them the fact that they're cops but they're cops they're also corrupt cops, if you think about it. Like, the rules don't apply to them. They can push the envelope as far as they want. And we're rooting for them to do it because it's in the name of our safety. Oh, baby. If the Innocence Project got a hold of the arrests that they have made, it'd be done deal. Done deal. Like, long read in The New Yorker. This is corruption. Like, not, not good. <laughs> so, what did you think of this movie? This is the fourth one. Um, I would say... You know what, I won't, I'll go into that critique in a second. What did you think of this fourth movie? You know, I really enjoyed it. So I've seen Bad Boys 1 and Bad Boys 2. I did skip Bad Boys 3. Um, that would be Bad Boys for Life. Bad Boys. I thought this was Bad Boys for Life. This is Bad Boys Ride or Die. Oh, okay. So I missed Bad Boys for Life. But before I came to the movies, I read the Wikipedia summary. And I'm glad I did because, again, lore. I I really enjoyed it. And I know that part of my enjoyment was the fact that, like, I was along for the ride with these characters for so long. Which is why I will say, like, that pulls me to Furiosa. I saw Furiosa without ever seeing a Mad Max. And then I went and watched Fury Road because Furiosa made me excited to watch... Furiosa hit the street with her like crew of bad bitches 
And after I saw Fury Road, I liked Furiosa a lot more. And so I think there's some movies where you just have the lore and it makes it more of an experience. And you would not think of Bad Boys having a lore, but it does. There were so many callbacks. Like there's even a scene towards the end that is very reminiscent of a scene in Bad Boys 2. And it was just, it's so heartwarming to see those things come full circle. Yeah, they used the shot uh, that was very, as soon as you see the shot, if you've been a part of Bad Boys, you know exactly what's happening. Um, and actually I would argue that there is a scene in this movie that is so gratifying to watch like that the entire audience burst out into applause in a way that I don't think I've heard since Captain America picked up the shield in Avengers Endgame so it was I mean and people were very enthusiastic about what was about to happen you could tell people were kind of like tongue in cheek like oh is this thing about to happen and then this thing actually does happen and everyone's like yes we wanted this thing to happen and I think honestly that is indicative of this entire movie because it starts off trash like from the beginning i'm like here we go this is bad boys three bad boys for life all over again it's just two old men telling jokes being out of touch with the world still thinking that the buddy cop movie works any of that stuff and i mean in the beginning i'm thinking i almost whispered to you one of five stars does the buddy cop movie work anymore why are we still doing this this is lethal weapon but worse uh we're just we're just we're going down a path but this movie it justifies its existence like every 20 minutes it just gets a little bit better a little bit better yeah i gotta say okay going in and maybe I shouldn't do just the Will Smith or Martin Lawrence because they both have television programs that if it's a Saturday night and I'm home on the couch I'm turning on my expectations were low and I was like you know what let me not do that to them like and maybe it was so good because my expectations were low I was like here we go some old guys how's this gonna be a problem how's it gonna be but it was fun and they acknowledge their age like there's this ongoing joke with Martin Lawrence where it's like you shouldn't be eating that. And like, I think all, a lot of us who have dads like have moments where we're like, sir, where did you get those chips? Put that down. And so like, it, it, it talked about their morality. It also was like, I'm a sucker. Mortality? Yeah, I meant mortality. <laughs> I can read. Um, but I'm also a sucker for, one of my favorite phenomenons is the world is black men being friends with each other. Honestly, that's probably why I'm friends with you, Ronald, because I see what good friendships you have with other black men. And I'm like, I love that. Keep doing that, guys. And I love just observing. I'm just like, ugh, look at y'all being friends. And so it had that element. And I was like, oh, like there's a moment in it where Martin Lawrence's character, Marcus, says to Mike, like, we're soulmates. And it's like, yeah, y'all yeah. are soulmates. Yeah. You are. I, I like that. I think there's a lot of parts of this movie that are definitely heartwarming. This is a movie that this does what Will Smith does best, which is if you go on his Instagram, what he does well with his Instagram is let other people curate it sometimes. And he always like, he lets, that's how you get so many relevant things happening with Will Smith over and over again. You get the fact that he's working with Kevin on stage. He's working with Tony Baker, two comedians who are very prominent in the social media community, as well as just like two prominent comedians right now. And then in, in this movie, you get like a couple of cameos there, because of that. There were some really good cameos. like some you do expect some you there was one like a uh, tiktok cameo where i was like what yeah what are you doing here but I it was you actually said that's a burst of joy yeah, yeah. like i was like oh i like that guy no, you said that sparks joy that's yeah, what you said. yeah that's it yeah. yeah but it was great yeah it was good i think i think um when you get to the uh, the one thing i will say is like it was good. It was funny. I like when they were cracking jokes. I think we came with a good audience who was laughing a lot. Um, sometimes the laughs were so loud that I would miss the follow-up or the second punchline and all that, which I don't like sometimes. I want to hear the rest of the joke because I want to keep laughing. Um, and sometimes I'm sitting there like reading their lips as everyone's uproariously laughing over the first one uh, and like kind of hoping that I get the rest of the joke. But uh, that uh, that's not a knock against the movie, really. That's really yeah. a knock against the audience being ready to laugh. And in some cases, like the guy behind behind us just ah! oh, the people surrounding us were it's very much like a and it depends on where you go because you can't do this anywhere but it's a place where an interactive audience is nice like you know I, I can see this as a movie where you're like oh I'm home it's streaming let's watch like this is the kind of movie where if I'm home for Christmas my parents and I are gonna put on but I will say if like you have the money to go see a movie if you got your little AMC stubs membership go and like but make sure it's a good theater like you know like a if like if you're in dc it's a chinatown on a friday night 
type of movie. Ooh, that's a good one. Gallery Place? Yeah, go to yeah. Gallery Place. Yeah. Go to the Gallery Place yeah. Regal yeah. and get a good crowd on like a Friday or a Saturday. A Buckle movie. in, get you a popcorn and a little soda. You'll have a great time. That's a good idea. They could do the uh, Birmingham one, the one the one me and you went to uh, for uh, what you call it. I think that would probably be a good crowd over there. It's in a mall. Yeah. So I feel like the crowd is going to like pull families. You at, honestly made me both bittersweet thinking like that my mother would have loved this movie. Yeah. But I know my father will 100 yeah. percent love it. So I'm definitely going to show it to him. So that's exciting. With all of that being said, out of five stars, how do you rate this movie? I am going to give it a three point five. Out of five. See, what I like about you, Jacqueline, is that you rate movies very fairly, even though you show, because I try to tell people, they'll be like, you said you liked it, but you gave it three stars. And I'm like, mm, oh, yeah. I think you guys don't understand, like, I could really like something and still see where it's deficient and still see where it doesn't work. And some parts of this don't work. So I really appreciate your three five uh, because you feel more enthusiastic about this movie than me, uh, but I have a higher ready, rating than you. Yeah. Because mine is a 3.75. Yeah. Well, okay. Because for me, a five star is like, oh, I need to be like yeah. moved to tears. Like, you're showing me 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. You are showing me Citizen Kane. You are showing me Eve's Bayou. Yeah. Like, we are like, cha like, I'm watching this movie, and after this movie, I'm leaving transformed leaving the theater yeah i'm leaving the theater transformed so <laughs> four or five i need to leave the theater yeah transformed and i i had a great time but my life was not changed i agree i think this is a 3.75 i think this is a movie like three being good let's get out uh but this is very much a jc howard the movies are back go see this a bad boys is in theater in summer 2024 uh it's not fourth of july weekend but get out there and see it i would say 3.75 for me represents that it could have been a four this could have been a great movie oh, yeah. but there's ways in which it just was not good like there's just parts of it there the, the, what i've noticed about these last two movies is they feel very sparse of background characters in a way that makes the environment seem very much like a movie set so like there's everyone you see is meant to be on the camera uh whereas in bad boys one and two it felt like they were more operating within a world in which in ways in which these last two movies have not been and i've just noticed that you know it's not something i mean it's not the huge knock against the movie but it's enough to say like it in ways it feels like yeah this is definitely a movie um which and, and sometimes i like it to be a little more gritty when it's being funny it's very funny but also when it's uh I like it when it's taking itself a little more seriously, when the stakes are a little higher, and they do that well. I think in Bad Boys 2, the way that's represented is as soon as he says, yo, it just got real, they got my sister, and they're taking a sister across the state, across uh, uh, country lines, you know what I mean? So once that happens, I'm just like, okay, th this is, we are, we are a different territory. It's not just them cracking jokes. They have to go do something serious. And this movie starts to get there a little bit, yeah. which I really appreciate. But undercutting itself a bit because it has to be funny and the ways in which I think Martin is like kind of in some ways reduced to being a bit of a buffoon at times mm. in ways that I'm like I think you're a little bit better than that but he's he's ready to get a check and that's not disrespect to him get your money but there was parts where I was just like okay and that's the, the only thing that make it like great I mean good not great yeah I think um when I when you mentioned the thing about the background actors I was like Oh, they used that budget on pyrotechnics. I was actually, I was surprised by how good I found the action scenes. I was ready to not be, because Michael Bay did not uh, direct this. And I was like, hmm, what's this gonna be like? You gotta remember, I didn't see the last one. But I was like, okay, look at that. I like that. They get them, like, the car's on fire. They're doing all types of, yeah. they jump in. There's gators. We had a great time. Lots of practical effects. I like those. Uh, uh, and I will say, I now encourage you to go back and watch Bad Boys for Life yeah. because I'm very interested to know your take on that as a part of the canon because I think that this is the third best Bad Boys movie. I think if they would have made this after two, like this movie, Bad Boys 4, definitely guarantees that there will be a five. Uh, and I think oh. if the budget, I mean, if, the, if it does well in the theater, but I think movie-wise, it's good enough to make a fifth one. Can I tell you what I think the fifth one will entail? More Reggie? Reggie and the son are going to team up. I could see that. The only problem is I don't think either of those two have that much uh, screen charisma. Mm, yeah. Because I'm like, Reggie, I like him, and we like his face, and he does facial expressions, and what he did in this movie was pretty cool, but 
there's something about he's not really a star. Mm. The thing, the, the thing about Reggie, I'm like, you know what? This is what happens when you persist. Yes. Not even like the actor, but the character. I'm like, look, he he withstood that uh, picking picking his daughter up. That was just the first step. And look at look at you now, Reggie. You're, well, look at the glow up, as the kids say. <laughs> and with that, Believe It in Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. I am mixing this episode once again. And if you're listening and you're like, this could be better. I don't know how good this is. There was music in the beginning and now there's not. Oh, my goodness. How is this spliced together? Just know that it's me, an amateur mixer, mixing this episode. And if you wanted professionals to do it, you should join the Patreon. Even if you still want me to mix the episode, join the Patreon anyway. We are out here, we, meaning me, is out here making a podcast episode for you every week, telling you about the movies. Some of y'all been listening for years, chipping some of that money. Very easy. Go to www.patreon.com slash leaving the theater or go to the link in our show notes every little bit helps show art from heather wilder theme music by the mysterious breakmaster cylinder for more information about bad boys ride or die or jockwillen hill check out our show notes you can find me on twitter instagram tiktok or threads at oh it's big ron that's at o-h-i-t-s-b-i-g-r-o-n you can find out more about this show and other oh it's big ron studio shows by following us on instagram at oh it's big ron studios and on twitter at oh it's big ron stew that's s-t-e-w leaving the theater will be back soon Thanks for listening. And thanks for being on the show while scrolling your little phone over there. Tee I was reading about Reggie on Wikipedia. <laughs> Did you find out anything good? No, because the world hasn't seen the movie yet. But I can't wait for Reddit once it does. Yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be some good things.